Hello everyone, welcome to episode 151 of Level Up, 60 minutes of live Q&A where your questions drive the show. My colleagues Adriana and Shanice are online in the chat, so please let them know your name and the city you're joining us from so we can get to know our audience. Adriana and Shanice will post a link in the comments so you can vote up the questions that you would most like answered today. And of course, for you to add your own questions in, which you can do throughout the show. So keep them coming for our panel. If your question is selected, your name will appear in the credits at the end of the show. So get yours in early and stay with us to see that happen. So today's episode is all about how to become a digital leader. Digital leadership has never been more important. The uh, rise of the internet and social media has literally changed everything from our relationships to how we run our businesses. Organizations need top tier talent running their digital operations so they can keep up with what's happening in the rapidly changing world or they risk being left behind. Our panel today are experts in helping individuals progress towards becoming digital leaders and are waiting to take your questions. So let's jump straight in and meet them. So I'm delighted to welcome back uh, Mark Rovers, um, educating and coaching leaders, professional and professionals and teams are Mark's passion and what he's been doing for nearly three decades. Mark works for Interprom, a coaching, consulting, training and education firm. And examples of his areas he specialized in are business relationship management, service management, information security and project and change management. Welcome back, Mart. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, APMG, for having me again. And look forward to this uh, session. Should be a very interesting one. And um, I'm sure with the expert panelists that we have today, we'll be able to uh, give lots of advice to our listeners and viewers. Yeah, absolutely sure we will. Thanks, Mart. Um, also returning to our panel today is Sunil Mehta. Sunil is the Managing Director of Quint Consulting Services and responsible for the training and consulting business across India, the Middle East and Africa. He has experience in the field of profit center management, product planning, project management, process development, channel management and quality management. His proudest professional achievement was establishing Quint in India in 2004. Welcome back, Sunil. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, PMG, and look forward to a very interesting session today. Thank you. Um, also joining us today is Nigel Mercer. Nigel heads up APMG's work across Africa and North America and has been part of the best practice sector for over 12 years, managing global operations as well as initiating and managing various key projects around the world. Nigel has over 20 years experience in IT, including business development, operations, global project and program management, education, software development and consulting. Thanks for joining us, Nigel. Yeah. Thanks. No problem, Ellie. Really glad to be here again today. It's always fun being on the Level Up panel. And as Mart said, this promises to be a really interesting show. It's a very, very valid topic right now. So good fun. Yeah. And completing today's panel and ready to answer your questions is Svetlana Sedenko. Svetlana is the Vice President of IT Chapter, the company of Group AppSide, a Canadian women-owned company which specializes in strategic BRM and IT service management consulting and training. Svetlana has also been a leading member of the Canadian BRM community since 2015 and has over 20 years experience in digital technology. Thank you for joining us today, Svetlana. Thank you, Ellie, for introducing me and um, um, uh, good morning or good evening to everyone. Very happy to be here and uh, discussing this uh, exciting and uh, uh, very important topic of digital leadership. Thank you, panel. So our question master for today is Charlotte Miller, who joins us from the Thames Valley here in the UK. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, Ali. Hi to our fantastic panellists. A slight change, change to the lineup today, but great to see you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Please, may we have our first question? You may, Ellie. We've got a question from Charlie Watts. Charlie asks, what sort of challenges can hold back digital transformation and how can we overcome them? Okay. Great question to start us off. Thanks, panel. We'll have Mart, Nigel, Svetlana, and Sunil. The one that, is, that uh, immediately comes to mind is actually uh, change management, organizational change management, introducing uh, digital technology or digital transformation type initiatives 
comes with uh, typically, if you want to do it right, with cultural change and being proficient in leading organizations through and change like that, change management, organizational change management is, a, is a definitely a challenge for more organizations and having the expertise in house will make a huge difference. Yeah, for sure. Um, change management um, is one of those things where whether it's digital or not, it's super important that people are on board with the change and you can help move them through that process. Um, Nigel, your thoughts, please. Wow, yeah, there's so many different things that can affect you know, a proper digital transformation, but one of them would be sort of siloed decision making. That really does have a big impact, just leading on from what Mark said, effective change management can help with that. Um, another one is uh, there is quite a severe skill shortage at the moment in this area. So not having enough skills within the organization to actually understand and deliver the different digital digital transformation strategies that you want to implement that's another big challenge yeah definitely making sure that your people have the right skills to uh, to move with the advancing technology to deliver the transformation yeah really important thank you um svetlana your thoughts on this question for charlie please well i can think about a couple of more actually the list can be very long uh one of them one of them is not understanding their digital transformation needs and uh, uh, digital transformation readiness. As a result, uh, going into the wrong direction, uh, not assessing their um, digital maturity of organization. Um, uh, and that creates significant obstacles uh, on the way of digital transformation. Another one would be the legacy systems and infrastructure. Many organizations are still living with the legacy systems and infrastructure, and they underestimate the gravity of the issue. Um, and um, they are trying or attempting uh, to implement the advanced uh, technology, um, which ultimately um, clash uh, with the existing legacy systems and, and infrastructure. Um, in addition, I would like to add to their topic of the skills gap. Um, yes, there is a severe shortage of their adequate resources uh, now, as we all experience uh, uh, around. And as a result, um, organizations may choose to rely on their uh, vendors of expertise of external uh, vendors, not growing up their internal skills. And this approach can be uh, very um, expensive and not aligned with organization's long-term digital strategy. Uh, and uh, as a result, the knowledge is not retained in organizations. So that's the three I could yeah. think about. Perfect. Thank you, Svetlana. Sunil, uh, what would you like to add for Charlie, please? Yeah, the, so this would, this would want it to come last because I think a lot of stuff got covered. But um, some of the things that I want to add is uh, everything when it comes digital, um, the lack of availability of technology sometimes is a big challenge because everybody is connected, everything, all data is online. And then if the, you know your voice goes down, your internet goes down, and we had some examples lately, that becomes a big issue. So you know how to manage, how to create backups, how to have partners uh, to manage that would be effective. So that's one. Um, another one which Mart did mention also is the lack of enterprise strategy. We do siloed kind of a, uh, you know, uh, transformation because obviously it's cost and time and effort but if you don't have an enterprise strategy in place once we get into the whole entire digital transformation it really does not give the benefits that you really start with the, with the basic uh, another one which i think Matt also talked about is employee pushback the resistance and competency you know uh, if you do not have the right people at the right time it creates to a lot of frustration in the system so you need to plan the competency much ahead to get your certifications or stuff in place. So um, I would start with the basic saying lack of availability of technology itself is a challenge. And if we can figure that out, we can go a long way in the digital transformation journey. Thanks. Thank you, Sunil. Um, Mark, did you have a, a response you want to come back and add some more for, uh, for Charlie? There's two more that I can think of, but like to add uh, also for the, the remainder of this uh, episode to keep that in, into account. That is uh, lack of um, awareness, knowledge within the executive team when it's about the digital uh, leadership. 
uh, often it's perceived as in, oh, it's a uh, CIO's responsibility or a CIO should worry about that. And the rest of the leadership thinks as in, well, it's not my concern. Um, of course, this is a very simplistic way of looking at it. But that's one of the challenges organizations deal with as in there's not sufficient knowledge at that level, which then leads to my second point is the, um, the creation of an innovative culture, which should come with... Uh, digital transformations and what is expected from uh, digital leaders uh, to uh, enable that uh, culture of innovation. And again, if you're not aware, then let alone there will be the appropriate culture in place, uh, innovative culture in place to uh, go through the digital transformations. So I'd like to add those two. Thank you. That's a great addition. Nigel, can you <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thanks. Just to, to piggyback on what Mart was saying there, actually, I wanted to mention that organization culture is probably one of the most key things in trying to implement a successful digital transformation strategy. And having a risk averse organization culture will definitely lead to failure. If you cannot create that innovation or create a culture and an environment within which people can innovate, it will be a failure. Yeah, great. Thanks for that. Now, Charlie, I hope that was um, helpful for you. Um, and Charlotte, please may you come back so we can have our next question, please. Thanks, Ella. Yes, we can. We've got a question from Deepak. What are some of the ethical considerations that digital leaders must take into account when implementing new technologies? Okay, Sunil, we'll come to you on this one. And then Svetlana, please. Yeah, so this is an interesting one. In the whole digital world, the data is available to everyone at any point in time, right? And and that's that's the danger part, and that's where the ethical consideration comes in. And as somebody said, and also repeated in Spider Man, with greater power comes greater responsibility. So if we have the data available at all point in time, we have to use it in the right way. So ethical use of data becomes very very critical. Uh, in terms of improved transparency. We need to have transparency so that people know what's available, what's there, who can use it, who can't use it. Um, another area probably I can think of is conduct audits to bring in accountability. So do we understand that people are using it in the, in the right spirit, in the right way? Is it being distributed uh, and not misused? And that's very, very important. Last piece would be, you know, use the standard confidentiality and availability concepts that we all know uh, in terms of access to the data uh, to the right pertaining uh, owner instead of everybody accessing it. So I would say, yes, it becomes very important uh, in terms of everything available, but use it judicially, use it for the right cause, use it for the organization, you know, improvement rather than your personal uh, improvement. Thanks. Thank you, Sunil. I love with Level Up that you never quite know where we're going to go. So we've had our first Marvel quote of the day. So <laughs> thank you for that. Um, Svetlana, um, your thoughts on this question, please. Well, my thoughts are that um, sometimes uh, ethical considerations uh, are not, uh, ethical aspects are not considered when the new technology is uh, invented, introduced and used in organizations. And there are multiple examples of uh, how uh, implementation of uh, new technology can be uh, uh, unethical. Well, I can give some, for example, facial recognition. Um, facial recognition technology, uh, which is maybe very fantastic, but uh, it might, uh, it might uh, uh, lead to their uh, profiling people, deceiving people, or um, any other uh, instances of uh, that sort. Another example, uh, which uh, was mentioned already, is data mining and uh, profiling, which can violate uh, uh, people's privacy and rights. And um, sometimes data is collected, well, not sometimes, many times uh, our data is collected without our consent and used without our, con our consent and uh, um, understanding uh, what, what is done with this data. It can be also seen unethical. Um, well, our famous one, uh, robotics and artificial intelligence, which is uh, taking world uh, by uh, uh, storm and um, now we, we are living through um, the automation and artificial intelligence um, uh, revolution. 
in a way, and it, would, it will take uh, away many jobs from people. So organizations who are just replacing uh, people with their automated jobs and not uh, reskilling these people, not not giving them opportunity to build up, uh, have time to um, be trained for the new jobs. But it also can be seen uh, unethical. Well, other examples is energy consumption uh, in the data centers, uh, uh, high energy consumptions, uh, or um, uh, well, also well-known example uh, waste of um, uh, discarded electronics, which is dumped now in underdeveloped countries, and so on and so forth. The list is, is the list is very long. In short, in conclusion, um, we need to. Uh, work uh, as uh, well as societies uh, all together to um, build up maybe new laws and regulations about ethics on how to use uh, uh, the technology that it doesn't uh, affect uh, the environment it doesn't affect people it doesn't it it it, it, it it's actually ethical yeah i i 100 agree just to stick with the movie theme quote was it a jurassic park where they said they were so worried about whether or not they could that they stopped they didn't stop to think about whether they should build the next thing um so yeah thank you for that svetlana really um insightful mark we'll bring you in on this one please just quickly i'll keep it short um svetlana uh, touched on it the uh, the data privacy and that leads me to uh, the the need for cybersecurity and information security. In other words, um, if you go down this path of digital transformation and, and being the digital leadership, make sure that you have your uh, information security, cybersecurity uh, in place. And that is a robust practice throughout the whole organization uh, since the um, amount of, uh, you know, culprits that we have out there uh, trying to uh, abuse or misuse or take advantage of people's uh, ignorance, if, if I can say that, it's, mm -hmm. it's just growing by the day. In other words, uh, definitely something to consider. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever the new technology is, there's already somebody looking for how they can use it to their advantage, isn't there? Thanks for that panel. We have a plethora of live questions flooding in from our audience. So um, Charlotte, can we invite you back to, uh, to go through some of these live questions with the panel, please? You certainly can, Ellie, and you're right. We've got loads of questions coming in. Um, the next one is from Fauzia, a LinkedIn viewer. How can we encourage organizations and different sectors to move towards digital transformation? Okay, thank you very much, Fauzia. Um, so, panel, how do we encourage the organization to get on board with this? Sunil and then Nigel, please. So, so I think uh, I'll take a few options. So one is I think bringing in success stories uh, from organizations which have been very successful, who have you know made it, who saved cost, who brought in customers. I think that encourages uh, uh, a bit. Uh, obviously, increasing awareness, uh, get doing webinars and blogs and attending them, kind of understand saying how difficult or easy is it? Is it possible for their own industry? That helps a lot. Uh, you know, attending uh, training programs, obviously, on digital uh, helps a lot. And maybe if they want to start, create small champions teams within the organization who do the research and submit their reports saying, you know, what does it entail for that particular organization to move to digital transformation? Just because everybody is moving does not mean they should, right? There has to be a specific team. There has to be a specific end objective. And do they meet that? With the current setup or they need to move on so i would say these could be a starting point uh, to encourage organizations yeah thank you um Sunil. that's really um helpful thank you so much and um, nigel your thoughts please yeah just going to take a slightly different angle on this uh, my my first question to anybody who you know when you're talking about encouraging them to get started with it is what do they want to transform if they don't understand what digital transformation actually means it's going to be very difficult to, to start with anything at the end of the day. So if they, if they can take a look at their industry sector and start looking at how they can innovate within their industry sector, that's their, probably their best first port of call to start looking at implementing any kind of digital transformation strategy. So try to think about how you would innovate, how you do, would do things a little bit better, a little bit smarter, a little bit cheaper, a little bit more efficient. That's the first port of call. And then look at your organization structure 
And then look at the other case studies and examples that you're going to find out there in the world in people that are in similar industries to you and what they've done and what they've achieved because of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Fazio, I hope that's helpful. Um, essentially, you're pointing out the benefits. You know, what is it going to be faster, cheaper, smarter? What is it they're going to get um, on the other side? And then building some internal capability to be able to help them deliver that. Charlotte, uh, please may we have our next question. You can. We've got another live question from Christopher Kelly. How can leaders ensure effective, effective progress on digital transformation within emerging new technologies environments, e.g. AI and integration? Okay, effective progress on digital transformation. Uh, Sunil and then Nigel, please, and then Svetlana. I, I'm going to take it slightly wider. It does not be AI, ML. It could be for mostly all. But I would say there are five elements uh, which are very, very critical when you look at the success. And I think one is, Nigel touched base on that, is why you want to do that, right? What's the need? Do you really need it? Not everybody needs that. So necessity. So if, as long as you have clear clarity on necessity, um, you know, it would not lead to resistance later on. That helps really. Uh, the second thing is, how would you use it? Because these are new things, not very many people probably would have used it. You look at success stories, but what's your long-term vision? What's your overall organization level vision? So that it kind of uh, could be communicated more effectively. So that helps. Uh, the second thing, third thing I would say is move from vision to detailed planning in terms of breakdown structures, go and talk to industry leaders, go and talk to vendors to find out how they will actually implement it. What would be the plan? Uh, and that should, you know, not lead to chaos. If you try to do too many things and you don't know where you're going, it could lead to chaos. Uh, and last but not the least, I would say resources. Do you have those resources to make that work? Do you need to go out? Or do you need to work with partners? What kind of competency these uh, resources should have? Do you have that in place? Do you need to go for certifications, whether it's change or digital transformation and so on and so forth. So I would say it's a, it's a stage. So starts with the necessity, go with the high level vision, go with plan, and then look at your resources. Thanks. Thank you, Sunil. Nigel? Yeah, and just to lead on what Sunil was saying there, understand your strategy, understand the effective goals. But I think one of the key elements to this is keeping abreast of technology. So if you don't understand the available technology that's out there to you, and you don't understand what that technology can do for you, you're in trouble. So there are a lot of different forums out there worldwide that can show you and help you to understand emerging tech. Yeah? And emerging tech can lead you down the garden path, but it can also provide you a lot of insights into how you want to achieve your goals. So take a look at emerging tech. Keep on looking at it. It's a constant thing. Constant. It doesn't stop. Imagine what we could do with our iPhones today that we couldn't do three years ago or two years ago or even six months ago. So you've got to keep abreast of that change. You've got to keep reading up on it. You've got to follow the forums, follow what the innovators are doing out there with tech right now. And that gives you, well, if you're designing for the future, you probably find that what you've designed is out of date before you've even considered implementing it. So you've got to look further ahead. Yeah, thanks, Nigel. I think um, I've had an awful lot of conversations recently around things like chat GPT, and it's not actually about just the technology itself. It's about having the people in your organization that understand how to ask the technology to do the right thing. That's when you're going to get the best out of it. You know, do people know how to use the technology and what its capability is? Um, Svetlana, your thoughts on this one for Christopher, please. Um, well, my thoughts uh, about it is, uh, well, I would, I would uh, talk about maybe three points. Um, uh, first one is a clear strategy. Uh, the second one is um, um, technology, existing technology. Be ready uh, to build up uh, uh, something new uh, by uh, ensuring that you have uh, uh, existing technology and infrastructure ready. And, uh, of course, a culture and people. So uh, the strategy needs to be built and it should be clear. A clear digital transformation strategy and uh, well I'm supporting Nigel in that so understand uh, why you need it 
how you go about it and uh, build your high level strategy and uh, break it out into their uh, more manageable pieces, maybe short term, long term, uh, uh, three years ahead and so on and so forth. But at the same time, uh, understand the whole, but do something about it. Um, encourage um, agility, encourage experimentation, don't be afraid to fail and uh, progress and iteration. So that uh, would be the first step. Uh, the people without strong team, without the coalition, without the strong team of believers, um, their um, initiative might become um, uh, chaotic, not supported and that leads us uh, to uh, our famous uh, obstacle and well-known, which is um, organizational culture, which is not supporting uh, the innovation, which is not supporting the digital transformations and uh, uh, people, people do resist. And uh, that stops many uh, digital initiatives. Anyways, uh, I will summarize uh, uh, the strategy, uh, the existing technology and uh, uh, culture in people. Perfect. Thanks, Svetlana. Nigel, can you just close us off on this one, please? Yeah, very briefly. A, a huge mistake that a lot of organizations make is to try to take their existing processes and digitize them. And that is often the worst thing you can possibly do. Okay? It's just most of the processes that organizations will have in place today are not designed or built for digital strategies at all. So don't do that. If your process needs changing, change it. It's your process. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. And um, there are some great um, videos on YouTube and things like that where you can look at, you know, how people are using some of this artificial intelligence and the kinds of um, ways in which you can ask it to do things to get the best out of it. So definitely do a bit of research in that. Um, hope that was useful for you, Christopher. Um, Charlotte? Oh. Svetlana, did you want to add something more? I, I, yeah, I just want to add my favorite, that if you automate the wrong process, you will just do the wrong process a little bit faster. So, um, and I observed that many times in, uh, in my clients' organizations that the the automation is there, the exciting tool is there, we, uh, and automation is done perfectly, except that it was done for the wrong process. And, uh, yeah okay thank you and we will move on now panel because we've got more questions flooding in so um thank you for that question christopher it definitely stimulated our um panel discussion charlotte who's next please <clears throat> thanks ali we've got a live viewer question from paradi how can a digital leader or organization keep at large keep up with incredible pace of change Okay, how do we keep up with the pace of change? I know you guys know a bit about change management. <laughs> so Sunil, we'll come to you first um, while the rest of the panel thinks about their answer. Yeah, so we did talk a little bit about this in the previous uh, question where we talked about you know, the necessity, et cetera. So I will go a little up on that. So one, I would say uh, competency. So how you need to develop the right competency you need to understand the new techniques, the new technologies which are coming in, which can help your organization move faster, change faster, adopt faster. So I think that's very important. Another thing that I observed in some organization that we work is that they celebrate failure stories. Now it's, un it's very nice because we always see success stories being celebrated. They celebrate failure stories. And the whole idea is to encourage new initiatives, you know, new things happening and not to kind of penalize people for trying out. And I like that concept a lot that if you encourage your organization or build a culture where people try new things, but it's okay to fail as long as they don't do the same you know, mistakes again and again. So that's great. Um, another point I would say obviously is management of change. And we have been talking about this throughout the you know, to talk today is how to manage change, look at the process, look at automation, look at um, you know, authority, look at roles and responsibility, look at your RACI, et cetera. Um, oh, the other component I would say communication strategy. I've seen when we are changing fast, when we're doing a lot of things, people really don't know what's happening. And there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of internal talks. So if you have a very clear communication strategy, who's going to say what, how is going to be informed, since when the messages has to go out, the whole management of change infrastructure will take place. So Effective communication strategy goes a long way in trying to, uh, you know, keep up with these changes that are happening so fast. And a lot of changes are not very 
known to people because it's happening for the first time. Yeah, Ellie. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree, Sunil. And, and also communication about the why and not necessarily just the what. You know, people can buy into something much more if they understand, you know, the purpose of the changes that are coming, not just what is expected of them. Um, Nigel, we'll come to you next on this one, please. Okay, so just two quick thoughts on this. One of them is iterative. Yeah? Developing in a digital world is an iterative thing. So when you are, have kicked off one in, 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 initiative, you need to start thinking about the second and the third one and kicking those off as well. The second thing is, think about developing an innovation think tank. It's something that can be very useful within your organization. It's the best practice community leader. You need to look at what those emerging tech things are and how can you plug those into your organization. And if you don't create the time and the people give them the space to actually do that, it won't happen. You will be stuck in that non-iterative cycle of develop something and continue with it. By that stage, you're out of debt. So think about that think tank philosophy yeah no i agree super important give people space for r d isn't it so they can design what comes next rather than just concentrate what they do now um mart your thoughts please it's a great question uh paridi thank you for asking the thought that immediately comes to mind is a business relationship management um, any organization that is focusing on business relationship management has a focus on the importance of a relationship between uh, people working for the organization, people uh, working for the organization, other organizations, the uh, stronger and healthier these uh, relationships between people, the better they get along, the better they're able and, and better shape they are to deal with uh, all the changes that are coming upon them. Actually, the Business Relationship Management Institute has built a whole body of knowledge just around this same uh, concept as a these great relationships can lead to better results, great results because of people getting along and having healthy relationships. Collectively, you can do more than as an individual. So therefore, I would, again, emphasize on the importance and maturing your business relationship management capabilities in your organization. Yeah, absolutely. If everyone's going forward together, it's much more likely to be successful, isn't it? Um, Svetlana, I'll bring you in for um, your thoughts on this one, please, and then we'll go to Sunil to finish it off. Yeah, so, well, uh, I would uh, add a couple of points to, to this uh, lifelong learning. Uh, embrace the lifelong learning and uh, keep your curiosity up. Uh, and that's, that's the way to go. The amount of information around us is overwhelming. And, uh, but we need to be curious. We need to find the balance uh, between this uh, huge amount of information and uh, uh, our curiosity, what we actually assess and uh, access. Sorry. And uh, um, that's uh, one aspect of it. Um, attend conference, attend uh, uh, courses, uh, um, um, read, uh, so, and retain the pieces of information. At, at, at some point, they will come um, uh, together in, in one piece, but also recognize that one individual cannot not know everything. And uh, the very relevant and pertinent information might not be um, in your immediate radar. In this sense, uh, I would support uh, Mart, uh, build strong relationships, build your business relationships and uh, by building your network, you will have an access uh, to many uh, um, aspects of knowledge. And uh, these people, this individual will help you. And uh, that's uh, the way to uh, keep up with the change. Thank you, Svetlana. Sunil, um, closing thoughts on this question, please. I'm going to bring the focus to one critical thing which is happening, which is customer success. A lot of companies have been talking around it. Where we're saying this customer is in the center. So if you are making changes, don't make changes for the sake of it. Keep the customer in the center and see what is the priority. Because you try to make too many changes and that impacts the organization's stability. Right? So I would say customer success is catching a lot. Obviously, BRM is very critical, but keep the customer center and see what makes sense for him, prioritize and then exit. Thanks, Ali. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Neil. Um, so, Faridi, I think I hope that was helpful. Um, certainly a very comprehensive answer from our panel. Um, so please keep those live questions coming. And Charlotte, please, can we have our next question? Certainly can, Ali. We've got a live question from Claudia, who's watching on LinkedIn. Claudia asks, digital transformation in this transformation is happening fast. The education sector is being impacted. How do you ensure that you 
catch the train at the right moment. Yeah, the education sector and digital transformation. Um, great question, Claudia. Thank you. We'll go Mart, Sunil, Nigel, Svetlana, please. Well, if you're not on this train yet, I mean, you're in deep trouble. So in other words, yeah, it's that uh, the train may have left the station. Um, in other words, so yeah, that it's the time is now and uh, you, you shouldn't hesitate or wait any second uh, to get your uh, organization up to par, up to speed with the appropriate knowledge and experience. And uh, if the education uh, is, if, again, if that education train has uh, passed, I mean, maybe hire uh, consultants, coaches to, uh, to get you there faster, uh, to bring the knowledge in-house that way. Uh, and maybe that's a way to accelerate, but uh, definitely um, make this a huge priority, uh, the whole education piece. Yeah, absolutely. And the types of education is changing as well. I mean, I think if you look at academia now, what they're teaching students at the moment, you know, we were talking earlier on about um, artificial intelligence taking jobs away. You know, the jobs that people are training for now, will they exist by the time they finish training for them? Um, so keeping up with that um, technology is, is super important. Um, so Neil, your thoughts, please, on this one. I'm, I'm being from the education sector, obviously, it has impacted us in a positive way. So I'm going to give an example. Earlier, content was king, right? So everything revolved around the content, the trainer is live and, you know, kind of. Now, the customer is the king, right? That's the center. Now, today, uh, you know, I, we are doing education across the world where people can join in day one, they can join in day two, they can join in day three, they get the day one section. It's all automated. We don't really have to worry, you know, uh, who's joining in, what time, what's the attention span, is he attending, is he not attending. All that is being done by the tools which are available and they're amazing tools. So I'm saying the whole education sector has transformed. There is no concept of location now, right? I, we are sitting in one location and we are delivering across the world. And, and if you're not on the train, you've lost it already because then you become only a very, very, very small, uh, you know, organization. But if you really want to grow, this is the bandwagon that you should have already taken. And, you know, not in a good way, but thanks to COVID, this got really accelerated because there was no other option. And we've seen amazing transformation. We've, saying, we've also seen amazing alignment of organizations who could not uh, work together. They've come together and formed, uh, you know, groups and, and they're making really, really impactful education initiatives. So, uh, yeah, so this is not the only industry. Every industry has seen digital transformation, but definitely education has seen it in a very uh, positive way. Ellie? Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent agree, um, Sunil. And I think, you know, as trainers, um, delivering the education, making sure that your trainers understand new technology and can embrace it as well, because, you know, we've all seen trainers that are experts in their field. But if they don't understand the technology and how to um, work with those candidates in the environment they're in, you know, that does uh, cause an issue. So making sure that your trainers understand what they're delivering and how they're delivering it as well is super important. Um, who are we coming to next one on this one? Nigel, we'll come to you, please. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, maybe I'll be a bit more controversial towards Sunil with this one. I think it's all about the content now as well, more so than it was ever about the students. It should be about the students, but a lot of people are looking at the tools and focusing all around the content. Yeah? How can they make that content better, more streamlined, delivered in a different way? But the key message here being, the way people learn today is very different to what it was two, three, four, five years ago. People generally these days want to learn in an entirely different style and format to the ones that we were used to. So how do you ensure that you're on that train and make sure you're keeping up with it. Research what the current learning trends are. Make sure that you can deliver your content and the skills that you have as a facilitator, trainer, expert, along with that content. Yeah? And I mean, one of the, th the things that we did is we made a change to make a lot of content available. And shows like this exact show that we're on today makes content available to folks in a format that they never had it before. So just think about how you can add value in the space and you will stay abreast of it. Yeah, absolutely agree. And how we learn today, Nigel, is different to how the next generation will learn. I mean, if you look at how children learn today, their first point of call is a video where somebody will tell them about it immediately. 
um, in short, tiny bursts. So what are we building in the next uh, generation of education? Um, Svetlana, uh, close us off on this one, please. Yeah, I um, um, participate in the academia as well. I um, um, uh, work as a part-time uh, professor in um, higher education, uh, teaching business technology. And I can relate uh, to what you've just said, uh, um, that uh, the skills, uh, the technologies which students are learning in school are often become obsolete by the time the students finish the school. And these students will, no, I mean, I don't want to say that they will miss the train because what they learn is they learn how to learn. And if they uh, um, build the skill to learn how to learn, they can learn something else. And this is how I see the exit of the situation because universities, well, I'm, I'm talking now about um, high, high education, universities, colleges, just by their nature, just by their... Um, internal approval processes and a very rigorous approach, they yet cannot change that fast to to uh, be uh, to catch up the pace of the technology change. It's not yet possible. Actually, I've done uh, significant research about it and uh, even wrote the articles how we can be more relevant. And the conclusion is it's hard, basically. It's not impossible, but it's not going to happen immediately. Um, I published this article as well towards my uh, uh, PhD thesis. Uh, but uh, on another side, I'm an I'm an instructor and trainer of uh, uh, modern certification courses, and uh, that's the way to go to catch the train, get trained. Okay, and uh, of course you can go to multiple uh, available online training, and uh, um, but I'm I'm strong believer of certification training because they're world class, they're rigorous, they're well designed, and uh, specifically for the uh, digital NIT. Uh, uh, the, for the digital transformation, I can recommend uh, the digital and IT strategy course from uh, Axelos, uh, which uh, which we teach. It's an eye-opening uh, content, uh, actually, and uh, it's modern. And for sure, you will not miss the train at least uh, for the next uh, several years. <laughs> I mean, several years we don't, we don't know, right? But for two three years for sure, because the pace of change now it's uh, very fast. But uh, um, and and many others in this sense, agile, uh, uh, Scrum, um, all these uh, management courses, and of course the technology courses, which are also available now, just uh, become going back to what I previously said. Just become a light learn, uh, lifelong uh, learner. And uh, we have uh, here uh, experts, uh, well, I know Mart uh, personally and S Sunil as well, and we keep learning nonstop. We keep yeah, learning I every know. year. We're attending the courses. We never stop learning. And, uh, and we have a lot of people around us who are learning, and uh, that's the way to go. I guess there's no other way. The things yeah, which absolutely. we learned in the school and university, in our youth, or maybe 10 years ago, needs to be updated and upgraded. Yeah, absolutely. And I totally agree about the speed at which, um, you know, academia can uh, can change. You know, some of the things that people are learning at university now will absolutely be automated and be part of technology. And actually, a really important thing for all of us is how do we use this technology to get the, the right results? Um, you know, not necessarily having all of that knowledge ourselves, but how do we use the technology to get the knowledge um, for us? Okay, um, Charlotte, please, uh, can I invite you back for our next question? You may, Ali. Um, we've got a question um, from my hometown, um, John in Manchester. Uh, what is a digital leader and what are the career opportunities? Okay, career opportunities for a digital leader. Uh, Nigel, we'll come to you first on that one. Thank you. Well, what is a digital leader is a bit harder to answer, but what are the career opportunities are probably slightly easier. Um, the career opportunities are enormous. Uh, I think most, most organizations at the moment are looking for people who can lead them into a digital era. Uh, if they haven't started that process now, they all pretty much realize that they need to start it. So lots and lots and lots of career opportunities in that. A digital leader, I think, is somebody who can take a look at the business as a whole and say, what could we improve by moving into a digital space? 
Which processes within the organization? Are there products that we could transform? Take a look at the internal culture of the organization and say, right, this is what's wrong with our organization. We are not leading properly. We're not demonstrating our leadership properly to our internal folks. That's really what a digital leader is all about. Taking a good look at developing that digital strategy and looking at enabling that culture of innovation and enabling change within the organization and driving that forward. So I think those are all things that you need to consider when you're talking about what is an agile leader or a digital leader. And agility is also something that needs to come into that equation, very much so. I don't think you can really be a digital leader without having some sort of culture of agility within an organization as well. Yeah, I absolutely agree, Nigel. And, and, you know, would it be fair to say that all leadership positions have to have an element of digital leadership now because, um, you know, almost all organizations uh, have, a, uh, you know, some form of digital element to them? Um, Sunil, we'll come to you uh, for your thoughts on this question, please. Okay, uh, if you look at the definition of a digital leader, um, just on a generic level, if you, if you search on the internet, it'll say that it's a strategic a digital leader is somebody who can use the company's digital assets to achieve business goals, right? It's as simple as that. Look at what you have, what you can innovate, how can you make sense of that to the end customer and kind of combine it. So, so it's, it's not a, a, from a leader point of view, it's not something very drastically different. Coming back to um, opportunities, I was searching in a couple of job uh, portals before the call and I could see amazing designations which were not there. If you search for a digital manager or digital transformation, you'll see something like I saw 34,000 uh, jobs available in one of the portals. And it talked about digital transformation leader, digital evangelist, digital manager. You know, these were not the regular designations that we were looking at. They were, you know, so I, I'm pretty happy that people have taken this very strongly. There is a huge lack of talent. Uh, in this, and as as we were talking today, it's not just one you know one focus or one skill that you need. You need a combination of skills which will make you one a leader, and second, if you add on top of it the digital competencies, it'll make you an effective digital leader. Thanks, Ali. Thank you, Sunil. Mark, your thoughts on this question, please, before we move on. I'll read off of a quick list. Uh, if you can check off all these boxes, I think you're ready to, uh, to be the digital leader. Um, knowing about emerging tech, uh, the importance of data, and how to uh, analyze data, collect data, and use it as a, your new asset of your organization. Understanding your audience, as in who are uh, these people that are interested in these uh, digitalized services, and Understanding, sorry, the ability to teach, something that a digital leader should, should uh, possess, to teach people around the digital capabilities of an organization. Persuade and influence, of course, to get the organization more digitalized. Um, knows how to uh, do some fundraising, get the funding going for um, digitalization in an organization. And last but not least, finding the right talent. I think if you can check all these seven boxes, uh, you're ready to uh, take on this next career opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Mark. That's really helpful. Um, Charlotte, can you come back and um, we'll look at the next question, please? We you can, um, Ellie. Um, I'm pleased to say we've got another live question. And that question has just disappeared. I'm just going to find it. So sorry. I don't know why it's disappeared. I shall get it back. So sorry. No problem at all. It's technology for you. So in the meantime, while Charlotte finds the question, Svetlana, um, did you want to add anything to the current question on screen? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, 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 I wanted because uh, the, the the digital leader is a leader, which has all the capabilities of their well, traditional leader, but with a strong understanding of digital technology, which makes this person a more powerful re uh, leader. So the career opportunities are everywhere because the technology now is uh, a, a key in any organization and understanding of digital technology is a key on any organization and doesn't mean that digital leader will only be leader of their uh, some digital uh, transformation and organization. It can be CEO, it can be president, it can be anything. It just adds power to 
um, your uh, current uh, leadership skills. Yeah, perfect. Thank you for that. Okay, so we have the question, the live question. Charlotte, can we invite you back um, for this question? Thank you. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, live question from Sufain. Are cloud, native and open source consumption model and collaboration style important for a successful and modern digital transformation? Okay, thank you very much. We'll go Sunil and then Nigel, please. Okay, so my point is, and this has been true, because open platform make it very easy for developers to try new things, to innovate, to take risks because there is not a major issue. The adoption uh, is high. Uh, service providers uh, take that risk and end customers are happy because an open platform interfaces with all existing platforms and there is no major cost uh, angle or there is a limited cost angle. So costs are manageable. So I would say, yes, the success of uh, some of these technologies and tools have been very, very effective because of the open platform. It would have been slightly different. It would have been very proprietary. Ellie? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks very much for that, Sunil. Nigel, your thoughts, please. I agree with what Sunil said. Okay, it, 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 having the software available to you and making it more accessible can be useful, but I do not think it is important for a successful digital transformation. It certainly isn't going to ensure successful digital transformation. Well, all it does do is it makes sure that you can assess, evaluate, and implement frameworks, software, you know, things like that, tool sets, without incurring a huge amount of cost. But with that comes high risk. A lot of the open source stuff is not tested uh, as well as it could be, as proprietary software would be. There are definitely built-in risks in there as well. And even some of the software that pertains to or purports to have been developed because they didn't trust the branded software contains more bugs and more software loopholes and security risks than the brand stuff. Yeah? So you need to be really, really careful about which tools you choose. Do your research really, really well. But I come back to the iteration of what we were talking about earlier. Make sure that your culture is correct first. Make sure you've got a digital, digital transformation strategy. Make sure you understand what direction your company is going to go in if you have that strategy in place. All of those things will determine what tools and software you might need in the first place. Yeah, great. Thanks for that, Nigel. Really helpful. Um, Charlotte, we'll just invite you back for what I think will probably be our last question from today's show. Um, yes, of course, Ali. Um, question. Um, um, next one would be from Kevin. And Kevin asks, in leadership, how important is understanding the current and potential future technology? Yeah, Kevin, I think we I think we have heard super important, but we will definitely go um, through that one again. Nigel, we'll come to you, please. Yeah, sorry, I know we've mentioned this already, but I have to mention it again. It is so critical that you understand the direction of technology as well as what the technology could potentially do for your business. If you don't understand that, then there's no point. Let somebody else try to work on the technology side and help you understand it. It is, in other words, it is absolutely critical to understand where emerging tech is going. What are the trends? Um, which trends have failed, more importantly, and why did they fail? Which ones are succeeding and why are they succeeding? If you don't understand, it's going to be very difficult for you to choose tech or a tech stack. Yeah, I completely agree. I heard a brilliant story many years ago now where someone was building a customer relationship management database. And when they started, there wasn't the functionality to send text messages and WhatsApp messages to their customers. What a shame by the time they got to it that that was how everybody wanted to receive um, the content. Uh, who are we coming to next? Svetlana, please, can you add to this one? Well, uh, I can think about two very, very pertinent reasons. It's uh, as a business leader, uh, you need to... Uh, um, and as a business leader and, and any leader, you need to keep up with the competition. Competition is everywhere, right? And uh, not understanding the capabilities of technology, um, uh, it will, uh, will lead organization to quickly fall behind the competitors. So um, not utilizing the, uh, the technology. And uh, when organization uh, falls behind the competitors and tries to catch up, not understanding um, the current and potential future technology uh, will uh, prevent leaders from making informed decisions. And then uh, the leaders will have to uh, rely on uh, their networks, on their vendors, 
which is uh, um, a very dangerous path because then you you, you don't uh, you don't have without understanding technology you cannot take the really informed decision you are sort of following your gut's feelings or following uh, the vendors uh, and you might choose uh, the complete uh, wrong technology. So uh, if you want to be up to speed and uh, be competitive on the market, for this reason, uh, the leaders, uh, uh, all sorts of leaders, including business leaders, need to understand uh, um, uh, the technology. Yeah, I completely agree. Which I think it's not just about- yeah. Not just about what you can do, but what your competitors might do next. You know, some of the organizations that oh. could have understand streaming uh, yeah. of content, for example, um, you know, could have spotted what was coming next down the line for them. Um, uh, Sunil, your thoughts on this one, please. So I'm going to summarize a little bit what we've been talking. So I'm saying digital leaders create digital strategy, right? The strategy get converted to process and procedures, right? It, and obviously process need to be automated enhance technology. So a digital leader need to understand the full flow. Otherwise, they won't be able to manage, they won't be able to control, they won't be able to really fulfill the end object. So that's point one. And I think point two is in an agile world, leaders have to be on top of data. And I think Svetlana talked about taking informed decisions. So at all times, you need to access those data. You need to create those reports. You need to look at those reports and charts and make decisions. And you don't have, you know, in the old world we had, uh, five people to manage that few. Now in the digital world, you yourself have to really look at and make a decision in the in the next split second. So access to technology and knowledge of technology, usage of technology for digital leaders becomes very, very, very critical. Thanks, Ellie. Yeah. Thanks, Sunil. Um, Mark, just finish us off uh, on this one, please. Uh, just quickly, um, this uh, again screams for uh, having architects on your team, uh, technology architects, data architect. So I just want to highlight that as far as one of the critical components of a digital strategy. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Okay, that was the last question for today's show. Um, So I'd like to thank, um, firstly, uh, you, our audience, our producers, for the excellent questions today. Brilliant to see so many live questions coming in. Um, And please do watch out for your name in the credits if your question was selected. Um, so, panel, it's time for your closing thoughts. Uh, so, let me start with uh, Mark. Your thoughts on today's show, please. Um, again, thank you, APMG, for having me. Thank you, uh, panelists, for a great, great answer. I think the audience uh, will walk away with uh, a tons of ideas, uh, hints, tips. I want to quote, uh, finish with a quote from Steve Jobs. I thought it was appropriate for this show. It talks about, he said once, innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. Yeah, excellent quote and uh, a great example of a digital leader. Svetlana, your thoughts on today's show, please. Yeah, thank you for having me uh, here today and thank you to all the colleagues uh, for this great conversation and uh, the message to the audience Become a life, uh, li- uh, be- become a lifelong learner. Be curious and don't be afraid to, to get out of your comfort zone and learn new things. Brilliant! Thank you so much, Salana. Sunil, your thoughts on today's show for our audience, please. Yeah, yeah when when we were doing these projects, um, one of the quotes which was keeping coming in, and I think there's a movie which says everything, everywhere, all at once. So, as a digital leader. Uh, the data is coming from all angles and you need to make sense of it. So I think today was a very interesting discussion. Uh, very, very good questions coming in. My last three thoughts uh, for a digital champion or a digital leader is dare to share. I think that's important that people used to hold information. Now you're going to make it available to all. So that's a that's a very different transformation. Champion self and others. We talked about uh, reinvent yourself, be a lifelong uh, learner. That's champion self and also champion others. And last bit is build on your human skills because that's becoming more and more relevant. You know, we didn't get a chance to talk about it, but emotional intelligence is playing a very, very critical role. It's a stressful world. You know, as I said, data is available everywhere, every time, all at once. So emotional intelligence is important. How to manage changes is important. How to manage stress becomes important. How to make decisions in a very... Yeah gray environment becomes important. So I would say I learned a lot. I made a lot of notes, uh, Ellie. So thank you to the panel and thank you, Ellie, for organizing this. uh, uh, My best wishes. 
You're very welcome. Thanks for joining us. Nigel, your thoughts on today, please. Yeah, just very, very briefly. I know we're out of time, but just thank you very much to the panelists. It was a pleasure being on here today with you, as well as our audience. And I could see over on LinkedIn and YouTube, there's enormously active chat, lots of live questions coming in. Just final thought for everybody, try to keep up with the direction of technology at the very minimum. Take a hard, introspective look at your organization strategy and whether or not you support your own digital transformations. Are you doing it in the right way? Is the culture correct? And, you know, I think try to have some fun with it and create some innovation within you know, your industry sector. So enjoy it. Thanks. Thank you, Nigel. Um, Charlotte, okay. can you just pop back and give us your closing thoughts for the day? Um, thanks, Ali. Thank you to you, Mark, Svetlana, Sonel and Nigel, and to our amazing audience that have all contributed towards the show with their live questions. As it's already been mentioned, Level Up is all about lifelong learning and we should encourage that and celebrate lifelong learning at every opportunity. Perfect. Thank you, panel. Well done, everyone. It was a great show today. So um, over on our website at APMG International, uh, you can search for the previously answered questions. There's over 1,500 there now from our previous shows. And it's a real comprehensive uh, free resource connecting you with over 170 experts from around the world. So please do go and check that out. Um, also, don't forget, you can listen to the audio versions of the show on your preferred uh, podcast platform. And uh, with the next shows coming up, we will take a little break now for the public holiday here, here in the UK on Monday. So we return on Friday the 12th of May when we will look at uh, continue our how-to series by answering your questions on how to become a business relationship manager. And then on Monday the 15th, uh, we'll look at how to become a business analyst. So do join us for those. Um, details of the shows are on the website along with all other upcoming events. Now, lastly, don't forget to subscribe to the show. We will send you a personal summary of what's coming up and how you can join us here on the panel and level up your career with APMG. Thanks for joining us, everyone. See you at the next show.